Hello and welcome to Tara's Daily Insight and the Open Door. I am Mitchell and I thank you for taking time to view and listen to this uh, video. I am setting the intention beforehand with the slide screen, so I hope that you say and work through that intention. I do so on my own before I start the video. So just uh, going to change it up a little bit, been led to do that. Um, so again, thank you for paying attention and watching. Very excited. Um, yesterday, Team Spirit uh, spoke, showed me images and pictures that um, the market, the Dow Jones market was going to be at some kind of a high, um, and it actually was over 15,000. I don't know what that means, but I had several people post on my Facebook page that Team Spirit definitely got that correct. It was like the highest ever, but it was fun to go back and watch the video because I knew what was going on in my head. And putting it into words for you was um, kind of fun to see me process that information. So I am so thankful and grateful uh, for Team Spirit and Source and all those on the other side teaching me and, and, and that I'm allowing them to come through for you guys. So feel free to share the video, pass it on. Um, I'm, I'm loving the direction things are going. So uh, I, I thank you. My website is down here at the bottom. And um, feel free to pop over there and see what other services I offer. And uh, let's dive in, get our tarot card for today. Our card for today, Temperance. Ah, this is going to lead right into the open door as well. So this is our Temperance card. This is number 14, which also boils down to a 5. So let's start with, um, first of all, the number 5. It's a very shifting, unstable, moving number. These are these are words, adjectives, and verbs, and things that I use a lot of times to describe the number five within the realms of tarot and my numerology, which is all based in and on tarot. Um, so this card was also one of those cards that when I first started learning, it came up. I couldn't remember the definition. It didn't resonate with me. I didn't understand when I look at it. And then one day, one of my teachers or in a book I read or was told that oftentimes when a card doesn't make sense to you, that's what you're working on right now. So um, I was working on Now it makes very clear sense to me because I am done with that phase. I'm sure there'll be other phases um, but uh, of, and I'll tell you what temperance is for me in the readings. Uh, as you can see, this angel floating, and most of the time it is an angel, and most of the times in different decks, is why I say most of the time, she'll have fire in one hand and water, or she's pouring water out of one cup and the other cup is full. So this is showing um, an ebb and flow, um, a coming and going um, movement, but um, this card, there's water in one hand, fire in the other. And temperance is like when you temper glass, you heat it and cool it and heat it and cool it to make it stronger. So this card is all about trials, tribulations, things that are going to make you a stronger, better person. Lessons, learning, you know, so it was, that was a, definitely a time period for me. Um, like I said, I'm sure it will make its way around because life is very cyclical and goes through its cycles. So uh, today... There's some testing and some trialing going on for you. Um, uh, I'm hearing figure out what it is. Yeah, this is leading so much into the open door um, and what Spirit told me to talk about. Um, but figure out what it is by asking simple questions and, and letting the answers either come immediately or through song lyrics or people or, or um, bumper stickers, you know, whatever way, shape or form they get a message to you. So if you're feeling frustrated, and you're not sure why things are happening to you, just simply ask, you know, what's going on? Show me. You have a multitude of guides and people around you to assist you and help you. You can call on angels. If you've never worked with angels, Doreen Virtue is an author of many, many books that I recommend. Um, if you uh, are, are unsure of other types of guides and things like that, just sit quietly in a meditative state and you can kind of figure out how to find those guides. Um, and they will come to you, whether they're animals, spiritual, alien, or deceased loved ones. They're there for you. You just have to ask for their help, give them permission, always vibrate, operate, and resonate in the highest possible frequency of love. And that is your protection right there because if there's any non-loving energy, it's much more dense and lower vibrating. So you stay as high as you can at that moment. So all that being said, I'm going to shift into the open door and we'll put our temperance card down for today. So I will see you on the other side of the door. 
Well, hello, I am Mitchell. Thank you for continuing to watch. If you're joining now, I appreciate it. And um, in between the two videos, I just drop my head and uh, kind of connect back on the other side of the door. And I'll edit that part out, but it's otherwise a continuous flow, nonstop of the camera. Um, in that quiet time, I saw an image of a lion. And, and I like to tell you how I see and what I do because that's part of my teaching. <clears throat> so I saw an image of a lion and I was asking, you know, what's going on there? And uh, because and I just looked for reference points. And because I uh, just booked a hotel at, at um, a place called Red Lion Inn in Seattle for the um, cruise in Alaska. And that was not it. But then I asked and I saw TV cameras news and I saw someone, I'm going to say fatally injured. Um, and that seems harsh, so I don't know if it's, I think the news will probably use that word. Um, but I, I feel like, you know, Team Spirit, they're, they're showing me an image of someone who's going to be injured um, or attacked by a lion of sorts, a big cat. I do feel the word lion um, and hear the word lion. And again, I say, you know, Spirit, why do you show me these things? And it is so that you and I and all watching can resonate vibrate and operate in the highest possible frequency of love for that person, for that incident, for the media, for anyone watching and wondering what's going on in this quote crazy world, um, that they would see um, the cycles in the world um, and they would see how um, out of situations like this and like other things, uh, you, you can think of the most horrible situations, that we can grow and we can learn and our, you know, our teachers signed up to do certain things, um, and that's that's in my belief system. I know that will probably be stretching some of yours. So, you know, even a baby that comes into a family's life for maybe six months, my belief system is that that child signed up for that short lifetime to to teach to possibly teach a family or a group or a community um, some serious lessons or just to be a wake up call. Um, as painful as that is and can be, um, that's what I believe, that's what I've read by many people who've channeled um, and, and spoke of these life contracts and these soul contracts that people have signed up for. I know I can look at almost anybody in my life that's passed away at a young age or even lived a long age and, and passed away suddenly or something. I mean, you know, my own grandfather at 95 decided he was done with life and he shot himself. And I remember receiving the call and and I and I got the call from my brother who was hysterical and I, and I said I'll be right there and I turned to people at work and I said I'm okay but my grandfather just shot himself I said I'm gonna step in the office for just a moment and then I'm gonna go over to my family and I stepped in the office and I connected to him you know I put what I preach into practice and I connected to him and I got a great over a great overflowing of love um, I realized that he never expected to live that long. Um, he took care of himself. He rode his bike every day. He was on like zero medications. Um, but when I connected and when I when I t chimed in, the biggest thing that I think he taught me was that at that age he didn't know, he didn't believe he would live that long, and he just didn't have purpose in his life. So even in that moment. I knew that I needed to continue to focus on what is my purpose, what makes me want to wake up, get out of bed, and go do something. Because at, you know, at this point, my grandmother, his wife, had they'd been together for 60 something years. She had been gone 14 years, and he had been he had counted off on a piece of paper how many years she was gone. And um, he even he even spoke openly sometimes. Said, "Yeah, I'm just getting old. I feel like just taking you know taking my gun and shooting myself." And and the family, you know took it seriously they tried to get him to move in but this was a man born in 19 what 12 or something you know he wasn't gonna move in with somebody he still drove still cooked still lived alone etc cetera, etc cetera. but he was somewhat of a loner so the lack of purpose you know probably brought him to that point um, I could have let it bother me upset me you know devastate me and not grow from it but I'm choosing to let it expand who I am and be a point of growth and lesson. So, and that's what we can do with any event, any tragedy there. Um, I'm, and one other thing that I'm supposed to talk about um, on Monday at my corporate day job, um, this one woman who has uh, been a thorn in my side for years, she's 
uh, customer that um, you know we see people on a regular basis. It's a it's a membership based facility, and um, she did something that just set me off. And I called my boss and I said, I'm either going to go in there and snatch her, <laughs> or I'm going to walk away. And my boss said, just walk away. It's not worth it. Well, driving home, I immediately went up, drove home, and it took me about 20 minutes to get through it through that how she had shaken me, how she had gotten to me again, because I went in and danced the dance of density with her. And I had to put her on the stage and say, you know, in my mind, I put her on a little stage and I said, I love you, you know, thank you, please forgive me, um, you know, I apologize. And it took me 20 minutes, I got a cup of coffee, came back out, still felt it, I had to do it again. But what I was doing was not so much apologizing to her, but those words, I love you, I'm sorry, I apologize, thank you, forgive me, they're all beautiful vibrating images and words and I had to change my vibration and change the vibration that I had towards her so then yesterday cool thing I'm sitting in my office and another another manager walks in and says this old man just came up to me and and said I need a receipt and then he and then the, the, the other manager had trouble printing out a receipt and this old man looked at him and said, why don't you get somebody younger? Well, he got under this person's skin, and this person doesn't let much get under their skin. And he sat there, and it gave me a perfect opportunity to talk about energy and the vibration and him dancing the dance with this guy. And by the time our conversation had finished, and I also got to talk about what I'm, what I'm supposed to talk about now, he said, I, I feel so much better. And this is someone who does not believe in this woo-woo stuff at all. So, he, But he trusts me and believes in what I say. Um, because he throws it back in my face when I need to hear it. <laughs> I love it. But the biggest thing was I said to him, and this is what I said to myself um, on Monday when that person got under my skin, I just said, you need to stop because this is not about that man. This is about you. And I said, stop and just ask that you would be shown why did I bring this person into my life? What did I do to attract them? And the moment I'm saying that to him, I realized Monday, I, I kind of lunged out and attacked somebody for not including me on some emails and things that I'm supposed to be in charge of, and that set my vibration. And then here comes this other thing for me, this woman getting under my skin. And he even said, yes, you're right. Last night I was very frustrated. Um, I just had my review. It threw me off guard, et cetera, et cetera. I was having moments of frustration. He goes, now you, and he said, now you think that, that I drew that person to me? He says, would he have not shown up? I said, he might have shown up, but you might have been somewhere else and somebody else would have pulled on his energy. And you might never even know this happened. He might have gotten somebody younger to take care of it. So the point is, is and, and he walked out of there totally different. His energy was completely different. And um, so it's about changing that energy. So when someone gets under your skin or when someone flips you off or something crazy happens, pause and say, why am I attracting this? What am I doing to attract this? You know, and then just wait for the answers and the response because you're a magnet pulling into you the people, places, things, and events that are around you. So um, anyway, all that being said, um, you know, just ask those simple questions about, I had some, I had another thought, but Spirit took it away from me. So if they remind me, I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. But um, long lesson, almost 15 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and just say to you, namaste. Have a wonderful day. Feel free to share, read tweet and post this anywhere. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you guys tomorrow.